Howdy y'all and welcome to Lax Lives. I'm Lakander and this is Lack Plays Feed the Beast. So today is probably going to be the first part of a at least two part series where we discuss uh, EU storage and EU transfer. And before we actually get into the EU storage and transfer, I want to talk about a couple of handy tools uh, that uh, I use. And uh, the first one is called the EU Reader. Uh, the EU Reader, and let me type in the recipe so you can see it here. EU Reader uh, is a device that allows you to detect how much EU is flowing through uh, a line at any given moment. And so you can see it's pretty simple. It's a circuit, piece of glowstone, four copper cables. Uh, when you're starting off, it can be a little difficult to get the glowstone. Uh, but the rest of it's pretty simple. Uh, but what it does is it allows you to detect how much power is flowing through your cables. Now, uh, all you have to do is you equip it, and you go to a cable, and you right click on the cable, and you can see it says starting new measurement in the corner there, and then when I click again, it tells me there is zero, zero movement. I've got no movement coming in or out of my cable. Uh, that's because nothing is using EU, uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the other, uh, the other device here is called a painter, and the painter is used to uh, to mark your cables so that they won't connect with each other. Uh, I just want painter, and it's just a couple pieces of iron and three pieces of wool doesn't matter what bowl, you're just going to get a, an empty painter. And then to uh, to change the color on the painter, like I like to use uh, blue and red. And so it doesn't matter though, any kind of dye you can get. Uh, I might actually have some red dye in this mess someplace. I don't see it though. Um, I might have just, oh, let me check my chest here. Uh, red dye, I got some yellow dye. Um, I got some redstone in here for some reason. That doesn't need to be in there. No, I do not have any red dye. Red dye? No. All right. Well, let's make up some red dye real quick. Uh, red dye is just made from roses. Blink. And just take the roses, put them in your crafting window. You get red dye. You take your painter, you put it in the crafting window. You put the dye with it, and you get painter with rose red on it. So to use this, all you have to do is right click on your cabling. Blink. See it turned red. Uh, and you're thinking, who cares what color my cables are? Well, nobody. Nobody cares what color your cables are. Uh, the trick is, though, uh, is that sometimes you need to run your cables near each other, but you don't want them to crisscross, and if you paint them two different colors, they won't connect. Uh, no paint will connect to anything painted will only connect to a non-painted or a matching color so if I were to paint this blue then these two would not be connected in fact let me go ahead and do that so you can see how it works blue uh, and you can see there is a durability gauge on this but the durability gauge is just how much paints left blue bam no longer connected simple as that so that's a couple of tools that you're going to want to use um, and let's try out the other one too uh, let me move my painters out of here and we'll use the EU reader I'll take the teleporter because that drains like 250,000 EU or something so that'll make sure that uh, EU is flowing and we can check out the reader here uh, there you go you can see it is pulling in 476.53 EU per tick. Which is pretty crazy. Uh, now, you don't necessarily need an EU reader. I just like to use it to make sure the EU is flowing through my cable. Uh, 477, 476 there. That's really not a lot of power for what I have set up, but most of mine is going to a matter fabricator. And oh, you know what? Speaking of my matter fabricator, my Steve's cart disappeared, so I had to make a new one. 
it's done. Let me uh, let me go stick this down real quick so I can get my generation going again. Uh, and we can look outside the station there at my solar panels real quick. Um, so I like to use a lot of different ways to generate EU. And uh, um, so I guess we can look in here at one of them. Since we use the wood farm, and I'll be sitting one up at the other place probably, I just haven't haven't had a lot of time. Uh, I went up at the dentist for three hours this morning, so I didn't have time to prep. And so down in here, um, you know, you can see I've got some Sterling engines hooked into my array here. And those Sterling engines are running off of charcoal, and the charcoal comes from the trees from my tree farms. And all that tree flows into all that tree. All the wood flows into the uh, the furnaces here, and they turn into charcoal. And then the charcoal is spread through anything that uses fuel. Uh, instead of, whoops, I totally missed the steps. Instead of using uh, coal or coal coke or any of that stuff, anything I use that requires fuel, um, pretty much I use charcoal for because the tree farm keeps me uh, supplied with charcoal. Now I also use uh, the biomass, I make EU off of that, but my main source of EU comes from solar panels. And I like solar panels a lot, so I have a lot of solar panels. Uh, I haven't been working on them lately. Uh, you can see there's a couple different colors here, that's because I've got different kinds of solar panels. We will talk about solar panels at a later date, I just wanted to show you where most of my EU comes from and uh, and we're actually gonna go inside the station and look at my EU set up in there now uh, when I took my first reading you saw that my EU had zero movement and that's because EU works on a pull principle instead of a push principle uh, like if you take a fork and stick it in your socket, uh, your plug socket, you're going to get shocked because there's electricity in your plug socket at all times. Uh, with EU, it doesn't work that way. There is not EU currently in this cable. Well, there might be. Uh, nope, there isn't. There's not EU in this cable because EU only flows when it's needed. And so right now, there is no EU in this whole line all the way up to where it connects in the floor above here. And so whenever you're using the EU you gotta remember it's only in use when it's being used uh, so if you have more than one machine connected only the machines that are currently operating are pulling EU out and so I don't really have any machines running at all along this path here um, although here I've got some uh, I've got some stuff ready to be compressed so if I throw these in the compressor, uh, then I can take my EU reader, and if we use it on the line, you can see three, three. It's only using three. That's that's pretty low. Shouldn't you be using more than three at this point? Um, that's cool. Crazy. The compressor only uses three EU. That's like nothing. Um, all right, so it only uses three EU. But you can see now I've got EU throwing, flowing through my cables. Now, another thing to be aware of with EU is you can see that uh, the measurements are listed in EU slash T. That is EU per tick. Uh, there's like 20 ticks in a second. Uh, so that's a lot of power flowing. Um, and so per tick doesn't really matter except for uh, whether or not you have enough power going into a machine. Some machines take 128 EU per tick, some take 512, some take uh, 32. Most of, most of my machines here are 32. And uh, um, well they might not use 32 though but they can accept 32. So when you're looking at your measurements, there's two measurements to look at. Um, one is per tick. Uh, let me look real quick here to see if I've got... 
I was going to grab a sign so I can write this down for you. Let me just make a sign real quick uh, so you can see the difference. All right. Me saying it, you know, you can hear it, but if I write it down, then you can also see it, and it makes it easier to understand, maybe. All right, now let's find a nice blank spot on a wall here. This looks like a good spot. So there's EU per EU per tick, and there's EU per packet. So EU per tick is how much there is. EU per packet is how big it is. So when we talk about 32 EU for a machine, they're talking packet size. If they're talking 128, they're talking packet size. Uh, when they look at cables, uh, like the copper cable can hold 32, the gold cable 128, um, the fiber and the heavy cable, I believe, are both uh, 512. Um, can the heavy cable hold more than that? I don't remember. Uh, there's very few machines that I... I actually don't have anything at the moment that produces more than 512 packet size. Uh, and the cables are different um, besides packet size. There's also resistance, uh, which is kind of technical, but the, um, the copper cable uh, has the most loss over distance. Uh, and the gold cable has slightly less loss, and then the fiber cable has the least amount. And I don't really use the heavy cable very often. There's also uh, uh, 10 cable, which I try to avoid as well. Fiber cable is what I always use once I get there. Fiber cable, though, takes diamonds to make. So until you can get to the diamonds, to have enough diamonds for it, um, you might not quite be ready for fiber cable. But that's my, my preferred method. And... Uh, um, but you got to remember, copper can only hold 32, uh, gold holds 128, and then the HV and the, uh, is this called HV, what is this called? Yep, HV cable and the fiber, glass fiber cable, um, both do more than 512, uh, or 512 and above. And so when you put down your machines, you got to make sure that your cable is capable of handling the EU that's coming through the line. If you have too much EU, then your cables will explode. And uh, uh, let's uh, let me bust out this cable here. I think I can hook a cable to a cable. Let's let's try. If this goes bad, I'm not going to be happy, but that's all right. I can rebuild this stuff. Ready? Oh, uh, it's not going to work. You know why? Because I need. Let me let me flip this back and forth again. Teleport. Teleport. Uh, there was no EU draining through it. I uh, remember it's a pull, so there is wasn't currently. Now it can run like 470 something. So here you go. How are you not exploding? I think my cable is shutting down the amount of EU. That's crazy. That's not possible. Oh, no, no, it is. I am totally sorry. Don't... What was I thinking? You know what? Um, everything I said is true. I just forgot. Uh, when I'm talking about cables, that's packet size. Uh, your your copper cable can hold any amount of EU per tick, pretty much. Um, it's packet size. It can't go bigger than 32 packet size. Can't go bigger than 128 packet size. Can't go bigger than I don't know what. Um, and so uh, I forgot. My system is set up so that everything is in 32 packet size, which is uh, what I wanted to show you today. And uh, when we when we get that far, but so looking at EU, you got to be aware. Some machines take 32, and when they say 32, they mean packet size. They don't mean they don't necessarily mean per tick. Uh, some machines take like this is 128 packet size, but it's also 128 per tick. This machine will not run 
if it is not receiving 128 EU per tick. So when you're first starting off, 128 EU per tick is ridiculous. Like if we go back to my back to my uh, little house here we're working on, I've got 12 EU per tick being generated. 12. That machine back there takes like two and a half minutes to do stuff, and I need 128 EU 20 times a second. Uh, let me open a calculator and see um, what this works out to be. Calculator. Alright, now that you can see the calculator. But so 128 by 20 seconds by uh, 250 seconds. That's 5,000 EU. Uh, that's not right. Is that right? It's only 5,000 EU. That's not so bad. 128 by... 20. Yeah, see, that can't be right. That must have been 50,000 EU. Because um, 128 times 20 is 2,560. 128 times 20 times 250. That's better. 640,000 EU. 640,000 EU. Uh, my bat box holds 40,000. So there's a problem there. If it requires, and that, that one machine I pointed out that takes 128 per tick, if at any time it is not receiving its 128 per tick, it resets like you hadn't put any work into it at all. And so you've got to have enough EU stored up to uh, be able to work with it. So um, now next episode, we're going to talk about storage a little bit more. But I just want to show you uh, real quick here before we finish um, what I do with my EU and why I got confused a little bit. Well, that, you know, you can hear I've got a bit of a head cold and between the head cold and the uh, the, denti <coughs> the dentist appointment and uh, the medications, I'm feeling a little strung out at the moment. Stop pushing that button. It's not going to do anything for you. Thank you. I just need to fly up here. This is my system. Uh, I uh, I worked with EU quite a bit trying to figure it out, and this is what I came up with. So uh, this is this is what I call my utility corridor, uh, and this uh, tunnel here, this cabling coming out of here is my solar arrays, my solar panels. Um, feeding in EU and uh, these here are my uh, my charcoal burners and they burn charcoal to produce EU and that's all they do is sit there and burn charcoal making EU come on get through here um, and then what they do is they come over here uh, oh, where do they come over they come over here here we go and what it's going to do is it's going to go down here and because it's coming in at 512 EU packet size uh, it has to run into one of the storage devices, the MFSU which you can see actually holds a million EU or no, 10 million EU, I can count, really I can 10 million EU but it puts it out at 512 EU per tick so um, we have to do math here for this to work out right. So 512 EU per tick um, breaks down into four packets of 128. So what I do is I take my 512 and I split it off into these four MV transformers. This is a medium volt transformer. That's what 128 is considered, medium volt. And so it changes the size of the packet from 512 to 128. But if I go from 512 to 128 directly, just one to one, then I actually lose the other three 128 packets because it's basically just shearing them off and dumping them. And so over here, what I get is I get four MFEs. Now you can skip the MFE. I just like the extra buffer. 
Um, but if the four MFEs each hold six, 600,000 apiece, so even one MFE isn't enough. I would need an MFE and a bat box of storage to be able to power that machine to do one bar. Uh, it depends on the bar. There's different times on different types of metals. but So 512 divided by 4 is, or divided by 128 is 4. So that's four medium volt transformers, each flowing into an MFE. And then here's where the painter comes in. You don't want your cables to cross. Uh, hold on, I'm stuck. You don't want your cables to cross over because you don't want the power shared between them. And there is some lag issues caused by uh, not directing where EU goes. And so you can see I painted them red and blue. And all you did, you know, like I showed you, you just hit them with the painter and they become red and blue. But those all go into uh, LV transformers, low volt transformers. And uh, uh, so what we get is uh, 128 divided by 32 is also 4. So each MFE uh, flows into 4 LV transformers. And once again, you do not need the next part. You can skip it. But once again, I like the buffer, so I've got bat boxes. And so my bat boxes... Um, are just two columns of bat boxes connected to two columns of LV transformers. And we'll, we'll look at the uh, individual components of this next time in more detail. Um, but with those stacked like that, what I get is 512 EU broken down into 32 packet size so that any of my machines can use it. Um, because no machine is specific packet size that I've used anyways. Um, they just have per tick requirements as long as you don't exceed their maximum packet. So just because the machine says 128 doesn't mean the packet size has to be 128. It's that it can't be bigger than 128. And so this allows me to run any amount of power I want without having to worry about burning up machines because the packet size is wrong. And that's like my cable didn't explode like I wanted it to. Uh, ooh, do I still have that on me? No. You know what, let me go get a cable real quick so you can see one explode. They don't really explode so much as uh, burn up. Oh, you know what, I also want to show you while we're in here. This is my uh, this is my biomass uh, tower. I may have showed you this before. The biomass is turned into uh, biofuel, which then feeds into my generators here, biogenerators. Um, but since my Steve's cart disappeared sometime yesterday or day before, um, I, my biomass production stopped and I gotta wait for it to start back up. Alright, I wanna grab... Eh, let's just get... I don't think I'll need ten, but... Let's get a few here. And <laughs> Maybe I won't get confused and stand here pushing buttons. Alright. So, with machines, if you hook in the wrong amount of um, the wrong amount of power, they'll explode. Uh, but with your cabling, it just f flashes smoke. Guess it'll fit through here. Yep. All right, here we go. Ready? Oh, because there's nothing pulling through the other side. Why can't I remember how this works? I don't have any machine to to pull power through this. That's a shame. Uh, let me let me tear it back down. Oh, I didn't want to put a hole in my station. Whoops. I can't control this thing. Uh, okay, what are you running to? I think you're running out to teleporters. You're running off of the 32-bit, though. That'll make everything explode. I don't want to connect to that. Can I... I'm afraid I'm going to damage my stuff here. Can I stick this here and you don't connect? All right. This should do it. Here we go. No, I can't do it. I can't make the cable explode today. I don't... 
I feel dumb. Can't make the cable explode. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll do it next time. You'd think as many times as I've made the cables explode in my game, I could manage it one time on camera, but no. Nope, not gonna have him. Um uh, it's alright. I think we're gonna call it here. Uh I know this is kinda overwhelming. Um I guess one trick I like to do with my EU too. Uh you don't have to do the giant contraption like I have here. Alright? Even if you're not even if you're not uh um I mean I have a lot of machines and when I'm doing something big, a lot of them are running all at the same time. But if you're not running all of them at the same time, you don't need to do all of those parts. Just remember that it's it's all by fours. So if I put down an MFSU, I don't want to start a new measurement. I'm sorry, I just wanted to click on it. If I'm starting a if I have an MFSU and I have all my power running into that, it can accept up to five twelve per are 512 packet size. Um, so usually what I do is I make one of these and then I run all my power into it. And then from this, I run out to an MFE or I run out to the MV transformer, uh, which then I can split into four, which is four 128s. Um, but really, I can do... Let me grab some materials here. Uh, we'll just look at this real quick. Uh, let me just get some cobblestone. We're going to use cobblestone. We're going to pretend this is all the same stuff. And let me grab some cables. Okay, so this is this is my power source, right? Whatever it happens to be. So I run a cable over. Oh, the cables aren't going to connect. And this is my MFSU, all right? So MFSU accepts up to 512 packet size, puts out 512 packet size. Not a big deal. Um, so I run that over, and you don't even need a cable between them, but I usually like to separate things. Well, that's not true. You are going to want a cable between them because you want to split this into four. So now this is an MV transformer, so that changes my 512 to 128. Well, my machine's only at 32, so I'm going to run another cable out, and this is an LV transformer, and then this is my machine. So power source, uh, you know what, I got those signs. power. Uh, that's not how you spell power, buddy. Power. MFSU. And now I need more signs. Doo -doo, uh, let's see. Five, six. Oh, I'm so used to playing 1.7 Minecraft at the moment. I keep hitting the control key to run. Uh, if you haven't tried out 1.7, the snapshots, um, I've been playing on 1339B. They added a run key. Um, oh, and you know, that's not the MFS. Oh, that's it. This is the MV Transformer. And this is the LV transformer and this is a 32 EU per packet machine all right and so the way this works is power supply goes in the MFSU it's stored here that is then split by the MV transformer which is then split by the LV transformer so it goes from being 512 to 128 to 32 to my 32 per packet machine. So when you're starting off, this is this is all you need. This is going to be the hardest thing to make right here. Is the MFSU it takes a lot of materials to make your first one, um, but once you get that made, um, you know, most of my machines are 32. So my first machine um, that comes in here is just a 32. Well, this MV transformer can support up to four machines as long as they're size 32 so that's what I do is I just uh, I add the machines 
until I reach four. And then once I reach four, well, um, this uh, this MV transformer, um, you know, like we just said, it can handle four of these. So that just means that I need another MV transformer because the MFSU can handle four of those. So then I just come over here and add another one, like so, and then you just cable over to it. Right? And then this is cable, cable, cable. And then you can paint them so they don't connect. Right? And so then we go LV transformer machine. LV transformer machine. LV machine. LV machine. Like so. And, uh, you know, and so I still have two more, two more of these MV transformers I can lay down to get my power in here. And, uh, and so that's really the basics of my power block, I call it, um, is you don't have to do it all at once, just do it as you need it. But uh, no matter how big you have to expand it, once you reach your maximum size, um, you're going to get all 512 EU coming out of this MFSU uh, being split into 512. It's not fully 512 because of the loss due to the cabling, but... Um, you get the idea. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for the day. So click like if you like, subscribe to be sure, and catch the next one. Uh, and uh, we will look at the individual machine or the individual storage devices um, that I normally use in more detail next time. So I will talk to you later.